Callum Aldrich, an office cleaner going about his shift, receives a chilling call that puts him on edge. The caller threatens to expose private photos unless Callum hurries to a specific location within a short window. Rushing to comply, he arrives at an accident scene where he finds a seemingly injured driver and a distressed passenger. Concerned, Callum contacts emergency services, but his attempt to help takes a harrowing turn when the injured driver unexpectedly grabs him. Hey there, welcome to Popcorn and Summaries. Today, we're diving into the 2023 thriller-slash-mystery movie known as Luther, The Fallen Son. But before we jump into the details, subscribing to the channel if you're into the commentary. Let's get right into it. The following day, Luther, known for his investigative prowess, delves into the accident and uncovers a deeper scheme, realizing that Callum wasn't a mere bystander, he was deliberately targeted for something more sinister than being in the wrong place at the wrong time. After Luther promises Callum's worried mother, Corinne, that he'll locate her son, doubts arise about Luther's commitments due to his history witnessing numerous deaths. Among the onlookers is David Roby, appearing anxious about Luther's involvement. Shockingly, David turns out to be the mastermind behind the kidnappings. Aware that Luther poses a significant threat to his scheme, David, with his eccentric appearance, delves into Luther's past police transgressions to discredit him. Subsequently, Luther faces a trial, accused of multiple illegal activities like threatening suspects, tampering with evidence, and accepting bribes, leading to his imprisonment at Hawksmoor Maximum Security Prison. David rejoices at this turn, seeing it as an opportunity to execute his plans unhindered. In an unsettling turn, the story unfolds with David revealed as a wealthy trader and a serial killer, using monetary leverage to extract dark secrets from people. Luther faces hostility in jail, blamed by some inmates for their incarceration, leading to repeated assaults orchestrated against him. The narrative jumps ahead several years, portraying Corinne receiving a distressing call from her son, Callum, crying for help. After a moment of confusion, she rushes to an empty house to find a horrifying scene, lifeless bodies suspended from the ceiling, including Callum's. As other victims' parents arrive, it becomes evident that the gruesome event was meticulously planned. Amidst chaos, the room ignites, and Corinne narrowly escapes, witnessing a masked figure watching her from the window as tragedy befalls the other parents. The following day, DCI Odette Rain assumes control of the investigation as the police arrive at the scene. Rain conducts a thorough examination of the house, prompting a meeting with her team. She emphasizes the meticulous planning behind the acts, signaling an extensive search for information. Rain tasks her team with identifying commonalities among the killings to progress in catching the perpetrator. Meanwhile, Luther remains incarcerated, receiving an envelope marked with the cryptic number 65.8, which he assumes to be a radio channel. Attached is a video of Callum's distressing voice before his demise, featuring David's ominous declaration about putting him in jail and daring Luther to intervene. Corinne confronts Luther in jail, reprimanding him for failing to find her son's killer, remaining closed off to his attempts at explanation. Following a brief conversation, Corinne departs, revealing that David orchestrated the meeting. Later, Luther discloses details of the covert show on his hidden phone to Rain, who refuses aid from a criminal, instructing her employee Archie to confiscate Luther's device. With no alternatives, Luther reaches out to Dennis, an old colleague, seeking escape plans from jail. However, before they can strategize, Guard sees Luther's phone. In subsequent years, Luther tries persuading guards for a transfer to a less secure prison, but the rigid system denies his request. Faced with this setback, Luther devises a strategy to provoke fellow inmates into attacking him, a move aimed at prompting a system-mandated relocation. On that night, a prisoner attempts something drastic, catching the attention of the control room cops. After being saved, he unexpectedly knocks them out, grabbing a key and causing chaos by unlocking all the rooms. This sparks a collective attack on Luther by other prisoners, prompting the guards to relocate him as planned. However, en route to a new jail, a black van intercepts the transport. Dennis and his crew overpower the cops, freeing Luther. Grateful, Luther pays them before heading off. Now free, Luther pledges to pursue the serial killer. Hearing of Luther's escape, Rain reaches out to retired cop Martin for help, knowing his familiarity with Luther could be beneficial. Martin agrees to assist and examines Luther's possessions in jail, uncovering a radio frequency. He deduces that tracing its origin will lead to Luther's location. Simultaneously, Luther reaches the broadcast site and encounters Derek, a tattoo artist. Luther confronts Derek about the use of his radio frequency, initially met with reluctance. Eventually, Derek reveals being coerced by a man into surrendering private tapes. He obtained the radio through a courier and was instructed to keep it on for 24 hours before discarding it. 
Derek hands Luther a smartphone used by the blackmailer to make calls, prompting Luther to take the device and leave moments before the arrival of law enforcement. Meanwhile, another scene showcases David's operative surveilling individuals worldwide by infiltrating phones, cameras, computers, and home security systems to gather private information. This clandestine data collection allows David to manipulate and blackmail his targets to fulfill his desires. In the subsequent scene, Luther urgently contacts Martin, seeking assistance in locating a phone number. Martin reluctantly agrees and provides directions to Piccadilly Circus. Luther updates Rain about the situation, prompting Rain to dispatch SCO-19, an armed police unit, to apprehend both Luther and the serial killer. Arriving at the designated location, Luther dials the number retrieved from Derek's cell phone, connecting with David, who's already present. This crucial communication helps Luther pinpoint David's whereabouts. In a chilling turn, David seizes a child from the crowd, brandishing a knife and wearing a disturbing smile. Feeling cornered, Luther finds himself at David's mercy, who ominously declares this event is merely the beginning, stressing its pivotal significance. Swiftly, individuals previously blackmailed by David begin leaping off a nearby building in succession, causing chaos. Seizing the moment, David seizes the opportunity to evade and heads towards a train, using the pandemonium to his advantage. Luther relentlessly pursues David, but law enforcement is also in hot pursuit. Eventually catching up to David, Luther engages in a tense struggle. Our protagonist gains the upper hand, managing to subdue David, but their confrontation is abruptly interrupted by a police officer who intervenes to halt the fight, allowing David to seize the opportunity and fatally wound the officer before fleeing. Luther swiftly administers first aid to the wounded officer before making his own escape. Following his escape, David contacts his confidant, Archie, demanding to know why he wasn't informed about Luther's jailbreak. With no response, David vows to distribute his compromising videos. He then contacts one of his associates, Kachimov, inquiring about the progress of their plan. Kachimov shares footage he obtained through surveillance, featuring a group of adolescents caught on camera. Meanwhile, Luther reaches out to Martin, requesting activation of audio mode on a particular device. The scenes intertwine, depicting Luther's desperate maneuvering against David's manipulative and calculated actions, setting the stage for a high-stakes clash between the two adversaries. Subsequently, Luther divulges his theory regarding the commonality between the victims. He posits that David employs threats through clandestine recordings and subsequent killings, inflicting fear of public exposure and shame, which supersedes the fear of death itself. Meanwhile, as Rain and Luther converse, Rain astutely identifies Luther's location, prompting her to dispatch a unit of officers to apprehend him. However, Luther anticipates this move, deliberately breaking his phone and swiftly vacating the area. On the same eventful night, Rain, burdened with work, instructs her daughter Anya to retire early, unaware of the impending danger. Seizing the opportunity, David effortlessly infiltrates the residence and abducts the vulnerable girl, taking advantage of her solitary state. Simultaneously, Luther visits Corinne in an attempt to glean more information about the killer's motives. Speculating that the assailant targeted Callum due to information he possessed, Luther probes Corinne about any new acquaintances since her son's tragic demise, surmising that she might unwittingly hold crucial clues to the identity of the perpetrator. She responds by recounting an encounter with a man named Tommy from a support group, unknowingly revealing that Tommy is, in fact, David. Meanwhile, Martin identifies a recurring pattern at the police headquarters, a man in his 40s engaging with multiple families. Despite changing identities, the consistent details raise suspicion. Rain discovers David's true identity in the database, but before she can relay this crucial information to her team, David preemptively contacts her, disclosing details about Anya. In a startling turn, David proposes a deal, offering to release the girl if Rain delivers Luther to him. Subsequently, Rain reaches out to Luther, arranging a rendezvous at a diner. Cunningly, she attempts to apprehend him, prepared to take him into custody. However, Luther refuses to surrender easily. Despite her efforts, he proves too large to fit into the trunk of a car, demonstrating his determination to evade capture. Researching David, they uncover his ex-wife Georgette's tragic story, he disfigured her face for infidelity, leaving her wheelchair bound and fearful. Visiting Georgette, they urge her to assist in capturing David. Initially hesitant, she relents upon learning about Rain's daughter. Georgette discloses David's ownership of land in Norway, prompting Luther and Rain to head there for a breakthrough. Before departing, Luther asks Martin for a crucial favor. Archie discovers Rain's departure and informs David. Realizing Georgette's betrayal, David coerces Archie to eliminate her. 
However, police apprehend Archie just before he can carry out the lethal act, fulfilling Luther's pre-arranged plan to safeguard Georgette. In a desperate move, Archie chooses to take the drug himself. Luther and Rain arrive at David's snowy home in Norway, encountering disturbing scenes of mannequins and a hanging girl. Mistakenly believing it's Anya, Rain blames Luther and demands him to leave. Luther complies, finding refuge in a secret basement as agreed. Later, Rain realizes the hanging body isn't Anya's, but before she can act, Kachimov intervenes. They return to the basement where David ambushes Luther, chaining him up. David initiates a live stream called the Red Bunker, showcasing torture and killings of his victims. In a disturbing turn, David broadcasts a live stream where viewers enjoy gruesome scenes and vote on victims' fates. He announces Luther as a special guest for his audience, initiating a twisted spectacle. Meanwhile, Rain is taken to the cave where Anya is held captive. David manipulates cops into turning on each other, but Luther intervenes, warning the audience that the police are tracing them, causing chaos and angering David. As David tries to exit, he locks the door remotely, prompting Luther to swiftly neutralize a guard, free Rain, and escape before the door seals shut. In a dire situation, Rain, Anya, and Kachimov are trapped as an impending fire looms. Kachimov turns on Rain, leading to a fierce struggle, but Rain manages to subdue him despite her physical disadvantage. Meanwhile, Luther confronts David in a fierce fight within a jeep. The jeep crashes into an ice lake, trapping David underwater, resulting in his demise. Luther, using David's phone, rescues Rain and Anya from the bunker before losing consciousness. Fortunately, police divers arrive in record time, saving Luther just in time. Rushed to a London hospital, Luther's survival is confirmed, and the news of the serial killer's demise brings relief to Corinne. Finally, a high-ranking official offers Luther a job at the police department in the concluding scene. If you enjoyed this gripping recap, show your support by hitting the like button and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to catch our upcoming videos.